Evolution is a big, fat lie. The Bible, a book that some, like me, don't accept. There are others that believe that humans wrote the words in the Bible to convey what a god may or may not be saying. And then there are folks like the guy in this video that believe the literal word of the Bible, leading them to believe, amongst many other things, that evolution is truly evil. Let's see if we agree. Hello, I'm the Skeptic. I watch videos on YouTube that make extraordinary claims, whether that's flat earth or strange conspiracies, but mostly the claim that a god is real, and then explain why I can't accept their position. Before we get into today's video, please do subscribe, hit that bell notification to be alerted for my next video, and drop a like. That would be amazing. In this God Squad video, we're taking a look at Remnant on Fire. With 17,000 subscribers, I was certain that there was some credibility to his word, since surely not that many people would follow someone who wasn't speaking the truth, would they? Wait. According to this gentleman, there are 11 reasons why evolution is truly evil. Since 11 is such a high number, I was concerned he may be right, so let's see. Evolution is probably one of the most destructive lies in the world today. Satan has been using this great deception since the 1800s. Straight off the bat there, no warming up or anything, no introduction, just evolution is a lie. We could just say that you'd have to demonstrate there even is a Satan, but that wouldn't be fun. You could also point out that it was kind of Satan to wait until the 1800s before spouting about the quote-unquote deception of evolution. Why would the devil wait that long before starting the deception? That we just came up randomly, a big bane, we came up through bacteria and somehow evolved through monkeys and into humans. Why don't theists understand basic evolutionary theory? No one that accepts evolutionary theory thinks we went through monkeys. It's disgusting and puts God in a completely negative light, which is what Satan wants. Hang on. Did we just jump straight to point two? Looking at point one, an opinion based on a lack of understanding, isn't an error of evolution. That's an error in understanding. So this has gone from 11 to 10 great errors. And point two, because evolutionary theory goes against what is taught in the Bible, it instantly puts God in a bad light. Because Christians can't explain it away, that's an error on the Christian's part for accepting that a God made people appear out of thin air or dirt without demonstrating it. So now we're at nine great errors. Okay, this this may be a quick video. It paints his character and his wisdom as below human. If you study the Bible, the character of God is all about love. He says, those who desire to be first will be last, and those who are last will be first. Those who desire to be high will be humbled. Those who are humbled will be exalted. What does any of that have to do with evolution? And what a terrible message. If you want to aim high, you'll be shot down. If you don't try in life, you'll get everything. That's not how it works. The first will be last, and the last will be first in the kingdom of heaven. Even God picked the least of, out of all the nations to carry his word and be a representative of his people in the Bible. And in evolution, it's survival of the fittest. The strong succeed and the weak die off. That's not the character of God. Most folks that accept evolutionary theory don't believe it has anything to do with a God, so this is completely irrelevant. And if God was so mighty and awesome and creating the universe and speaking into existence, why would he make a system where the strong survive and the weak die and it's this brutal terrible unforgiving system of the strong survival of the fittest that does not fit god's character at all evolution doesn't fit what the bible says so what science doesn't use the bible to explain evolution a cookbook doesn't explain how frodo took the ring to mordor but chefs don't proclaim the lord of the rings to be evil evolution also creates all kinds of gender problems. Gender is a social construct. What you actually mean is sex, but do carry on. You want to know where the gender problems come into existence? It's because of evolution. In Genesis, God speaks. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created 
them. But without demonstrating that actually happened, we can only go by what is testable and repeatable. Also, God is a he, right? If he created women in his own image, wouldn't they look exactly the same as men and be indistinguishable from each other? Just a thought. Right at the beginning, God says, look, I made a male and I made a female. There are no others. And male and female will procreate, leave their father and mother and have children of their own. Having sex with their brothers and sisters. Gross. He didn't make Sam and Freddy or Sue and Eve. He made Adam and Eve. This is something that's bugged me ever since I started reading the Bible. God first made man and woman before Adam and Eve, if we're to take the book as literally as this guy is. It was in Genesis chapter 1 where man and woman first made an appearance, but Genesis chapter 2 before Adam was there. So how on earth would you know that Sue, Sam and Freddy weren't around? Oh, that's right, you don't. Right there, gender is established. The covenant of marriage is right there at the beginning. And evolution destroys all of that. Yes, because it's easily destroyed and absolutely ridiculous. In fact, that sounded like an admittance that evolutionary theory destroys the Bible. <laughs> Great. And evolution destroys all of that. And evolution destroys all of that. And evolution destroys all of that. Does that mean we can remove point four now and make this seven reasons why evolution is evil? And with evolution, there's no need for a savior. Essentially, all we have here is this isn't what the Bible says. Wah, wah, wah. Why would we need a savior? As as a species, we've slowly been destroying our home. It may be too late to rectify the problem, but one saviour won't be able to do that. We need to band together to make changes. Though, if we are going to nominate a saviour, can I suggest Greta Thunberg? She's demonstrable, accepts science, and has a big enough following that she can make a difference. I'm going to strike out point five, so now we're down to six reasons. Because, well, we'll eventually evolve past all these problems and save ourselves. With Greta's help, of course. Also, there's no need for a seventh-day Sabbath with evolution because it took millions and millions and billions and billions of years to create. It, wasn't, it didn't all just happen in six days and God resting on the seventh. That's all symbolic. That didn't really happen. It's a good story, people say. We even hear these things from people who profess to be Christians themselves. But we all know that God created in a literal six days. And there's a huge problem with this too. Since dating can demonstrate the age of the earth, it's far more than the six or seven thousand years it says in the Bible. And having a day of rest, if you're an all-powerful omnipotent being that could just speak things into existence, why would you need to rest? Doesn't resting show weakness? Surely a being that was able to do everything and anything can continue on without rest. So down to five reasons. And like I said earlier, many people claim to be Christians believe instead of god's word believe in mankind's word and say yeah i think god made the world and the universe in millions and billions of years or he's the one that set off the big bang that spiraled and then he guided us and and it made sure we evolved into where we are now how does that make evolution evil this guy just spouts things off offering nothing to give his claims any credibility except that's not what god's literal word says happened why listen to what man says why listen to what the creation says how we came about instead of listening to the way God said we came about. Oh, can I please say about him needing to demonstrate that God said that without using the Bible? I know I shouldn't, but please, can I? For me personally, in my house, we believe what God says about how he created us. Okay, but why? Why do you believe that? Do you have a good reason to accept it, or is it just because it says so in a book? That you'd need to demonstrate was the word of a God. Oh, whoops, sorry. Four reasons now, then. And many schools don't offer the alternative which is creation. They're always teaching about evolution and say that we create, we're create, we created from a big bang and we slowly evolved. Okay, big bang theory and evolutionary theory are two separate things. Get some learnings in your brain holes. Evolutionary theory is testable and demonstrable, so why on earth would you offer an alternative? They don't offer the other part about maybe, hmm, maybe there's a God that spoke us into existence and that loves us and that wouldn't put us in the survival of the fittest Hunger Games type scenario of trying to survive. God wouldn't force people to survive? Really? Have we forgotten the Great Flood, the Ten Plagues of Egypt, the Seven Year Plague during the time of Joseph, Moses and the Nile, to name a few, and the alternative to evolution is God spoke things into existence? What about aliens putting us here? What about the Islamic God 
Allah putting us here? What about robots in the underworld creating life? What about the great pumpkin that dropped seeds that turned into humans? There are so many could-bes that you couldn't possibly teach all of them. The problem is, you'd have to demonstrate that they could be a possibility, not just say that a book says it's true and accept it, down to three reasons. And there's no evidence whatsoever for evolution. In fact, there's complete opposite. It's the complete opposite. There's plenty of evidence for the biblical flood and creation instead. Point to sources, because as far as I've seen, there's absolutely no reliable evidence for the flood or creationism. If you're accepting it, could that just be something to do with your standards of evidence? It's no coincidence that in 1844, Charles Darwin finished a detailed account of his theory of evolution. The same year as the great disappointment the Millerites experienced, In 1842, Darwin writes a 35-page draft of his theory, but shares it with no one. In the next three years, he begins tentatively testing out his radical ideas on other scientists he believes he can trust. And then in 1844, Darwin finished a detailed 230-page account of his theory, yet still he does not dare take it to public and he asked someone to publish it in case of his sudden death. So what? In a society that is wholly religious, coming out with something that goes against the masses is absolutely daunting. That has nothing to do with the reliability of his theory. So it's no coincidence that in 1844, when Charles Darwin was drafting his theory about evolution, that the church experienced a great disappointment of what they thought was going to be the second coming. I view it as a coincidence, so what now? But actually, it was just Jesus changing positions in the most holy place in heaven, not here on earth. (laughs) What? That doesn't even make sense. Christians really are good at spouting random babble and hoping someone bites. I unfortunately think this just sounds like nonsense. His video is getting shorter and shorter. I think we're just down to two now. He didn't want people understanding it and he wanted to mislead people. So it's no coincidence that a bunch of things happened in 1844, one of which is the Theory of Evolution by Charles Darwin. Is he calling Darwin Satan now? Oh, wow. This is just sad. Satan hates you. He hates us. He hates God. And he wants everybody to be led astray. But I don't believe there is a Satan. So what now? Writing off point 10 so we're at one reason why evolution is dangerous. Okay, make it a good one. If you're a Christian hailing evolution and teaching it and accepting it, you are not a Christian. Of course, no true Scotsman, I mean, Christian would ever accept scientific explanation. If that is point 11, then this entire video is a waste of time. Because you don't believe in God's word. I've just discovered I'm not a true Christian. Oh, wait. It's seen these news articles earlier in the week that made me want to make this video. In a news article on CNN, it says some elephants are evolving to have no tusks as a response to brutal poaching. And this is exactly how evolution works. Traits that survive are passed on to the next generation. If elephants are killed because they have tusks, then they're not passing on their tusk-growing genes. If elephants that have no tusks are not being killed, they remain alive to pass on the no-tusk gene. It's really not that difficult to understand. It's much like picking traits in dogs and passing it on to the next generation. And then uh, a similar article here on uh, side.org Why no tusk? Poaching tips. Scales of elephant evolution. The years of unrest changed the trajectory of evolution in that population, said an evolutionary biologist, Shane Campbell Station, based in Princeton University. Well, I'm sorry, but this man doesn't understand what's going on here. He's calling it evolution, and it's completely wrong. And I'm sure your degree in science is about to tell us why. Listen to this language these scientists use. We think... Which is the same as saying our best understanding is. The thing is, with this theory, it's demonstrable. You can observe tuskless elephants breeding and their offspring having no tusks. I see no problem here. It's better at least than saying, this book says the earth was created in six days. So it was. And we can demonstrate it because the book says so. Most people think of evolution as something that proceeds slowly. But humans can hit the accelerator. So they talk about evolution in the past, how it literally takes billions and billions of years to happen, right? Right. When left to happen alone, it takes a long time. But humans can speed up the process with selective breeding, as has been demonstrated so many times in domesticated species. How is this difficult for you to understand? Oh, well, suddenly uh, these uh, elephants 
are developing no tusk in just like 30 years. Yes, because human intervention is causing the tusk gene to die out. Simple. Evolution is a big fat lie. And these, both these articles have a, whoever wrote them and whatever scientists they're talking to have no idea what they're talking about. I'm not even a scientist and I can see that. Why? What's happening here? Adaptation, not evolution. Do you want to tell him or should I? He then goes on to explain how God put adaptation into DNA and that an elephant saw his friend get killed and decided not to have tusks anymore. Part of me thinks he's trolling at this point, but it's pretty hilarious. If you want to see it, I've put a link in the description. But I still remain unconvinced that evolution is evil or dangerous, so I will skeptic this fellow off as completely ridiculous with his unsubstantiated claims. Are you now convinced that evolution is the work of the devil? Let me know in the section below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. From me, the skeptic, stay safe, keep thinking logically, and ask questions. Skepticism is the first step towards truth. See you next Saturday.